get started, there is a BitGet offer. There's only 90 slots left. We had 100, it's now to 90. If you are a trader, check it out. The link is below. There are some rewards for you. Today, Bitcoin really didn't do much, but the S&P saw a bit of a bounce off the 200 weekly moving average. The interesting thing is that today's bounce in the stock market likely would have been much bigger if Apple had not come out with the news that they're planning to halt the production of the iPhone 14 or reduce the amount of iPhones that they're creating. What we saw was Apple dumped. Now, Apple makes up 7% of the entire S&P. The 7% of the S&P is weighted to Apple, and it went down today. The S&P went up today. If Apple had not had this negative news, today's bounce could have been much bigger, which goes back to the, the, the point that nobody knows what's gonna happen in the markets. Any piece of news can change things. If Apple didn't say this today, we could have had a major rally and Bitcoin could have snapped up off the low, but it didn't happen because 7% of the S&P decided that it wanted to go down. Markets are so unpredictable and we know that. Apple ditched the production of the iPhone, or Apple ditched production increase after demand falters. So guys, consumers right now are actually being more conservative. Consumers are going to the grocery store and they're seeing that the groceries are very expensive, inflation is high, and they're being told on the news, there's a recession, there's a recession. So they're actually being sort of scared into not being aggressive consumers. They're being conservative. Consumers are now conservative. They see a recession coming, they're told it's coming. So instead of just buying every iPhone, as they normally would, now they're saying, hold on, if we're going into a recession, maybe I shouldn't be blowing my money on this again. So this ties into the risks that we've been talking about on this channel, the, res the upcoming earnings recession. In a month or so, we're gonna see earnings reports. We might see that, well, earnings aren't doing as well. Consumers are being conservative, and that could drive us into the next major down phase of the market. As Ray Dalio said, Bridgewater, their firm is saying that the equity markets are not pricing in the earnings recession that is likely to come. Remember, right now, EPS values, the orange line, is at the highest high it's been ever. Every major pullback, every major recession, we do see an earnings dip, and we have not seen it yet. So that is the next stage of the tightening cycle is consumers being conservative, less earnings, interest rates being higher, putting pressure on businesses, some pain in the household, inflation's high. So there are risks right now. Remember, there are risks. Now, I don't wanna be too tunnel vision about this and just say down only, down only, risk, risk, risk. Right now, we're actually seeing the US dollar index pull back on the weekly chart. And so sometimes markets don't necessarily follow reality exactly. Sometimes markets do their own thing. We've seen markets be very irrational at times. And if this US dollar index weekly reversal, if we end up closing the, the weekly red and we see a couple more weeklies down for the US dollar index, this could usher in a short-term rally. Maybe that ends up being a bullish fake out. That's always possible. Uh, right now, the S&P is at the 200 weekly moving average, which in my opinion is the recession threshold. Because look, in every bull market, we're bouncing off of this moving average. But in the recessions, what are we doing? We're falling below it, right? And now we're at it. So it's possible that in the meantime, if the US dollar index wants to come down, if 10 year treasury yields want to come down, we might see some kind of short-term bounce. It may just be a fake out, but I do not want to be tunnel vision. I, I, these are markets. Markets go up, they go down. They don't just go in one direction. So we have to be able to accept a possible bounce that may come in before an earnings recession occurs. So today market's up. Um, you know, Maybe the Apple news will just cause the market to go down even more. Um, it's very difficult to say. Maybe another company comes out with a news article tomorrow that says something else and the market does something based on that. Guys, the markets are so unpredictable. So just remember, things change on a daily basis. New information comes every day and you just don't know. But we are in a tightening cycle. Interest rates are on the rise. We're looking at the federal funds rate 
the first time we've had higher highs on the interest rates since 1980. We're coming up. The macro is shifting. So we do have to be very mindful of the fact that things are tightening and shifting. And the era of up only that we've been in for a decade may be put on pause. We might have to click the pause button on this idea that things are going to go up only and expect some more volatility, expect some more contractions, expect some more pain in households, pain in the business areas, you know, businesses feeling more pressure. And, um, you know, Fed's going to raise rates multiple more times. They're going to sustain high interest rate levels till end of 2023, 24, 25. And who knows if the war in Ukraine expands, there's going to be more spending needed, which could cause more inflation to go out of control. There is just no way to know what's going to happen right now. It's so unpredictable, and I cannot stress that enough, guys. You know, you got to give me and other analysts a break when we maybe we don't get something right because it's so unpredictable from a day-to-day -day basis. And with the uncertainty of what's going on, with the war, the war economy, America has weaponized the dollar. Russia has weaponized its commodities, turning off the taps to Europe. And it's time to think about the risk of inflation staying higher for longer due to economic warfare and less about inflation being driven by a messy reopening stimulus process. Guys, these are very uncertain times, very unpredictable times. And we just got to keep an open mind. I do expect the markets to probably hit lower prices at some point from now until earnings season. Maybe there's a bounce. I mean, the market's bouncing today. Maybe we see some kind of rally. But I think ultimately there's probably going to be some more downside pressure. But that's just my opinion. And my opinion doesn't really mean anything. And neither does yours. What matters is what the chart says, what, what actually happens. Right now, the U.S. dollar index is seeing a little bit of rejection on the weekly. What we've always done so far, guys, and on September 7th, we made a call here about the US dollar index hitting 107.70, and we nailed the target perfectly. How did that happen? How were we able to do that on this channel? Well, it was really simple, actually. We just took this low to high, and we said, okay, we reached the 50% Fib retrace for the DXY. Okay, go from this low to the next high. Came back to where? The 50% retrace. And so on September 7th, I said, okay, guys, 50% retrace is the next downside target for the US dollar index. And then the markets dump again. And bang, it happened. 50% retrace, we rally. So if we just go based on that one more time, the US dollar index, 50% retrace comes in at 111.2, about 111.22, roughly 111.22. So it's possible that the US dollar index trickles down, maybe and then bounces up, it goes even higher, markets go lower. It's possible that the US dollar index trickles down and breaks the parabola and markets get bullish again. It's possible that we don't even go down at all and we just continue up. It's so unpredictable and anyone that tells you that they know for sure is a buffoon, a complete buffoon. So guys, just keep an open mind in these uncertain times. We'll see what happens again contraction in the markets, consumers are more conservative, earnings are likely to go down, markets could go down further. In the meantime, I suppose it's possible that the markets could bounce if the US dollar index continues to pull back, 10-year treasury yields continue to pull back. All very possible things. Not really seeing much speculation, okay? Bitcoin is being, there's very low levels of speculation in the Bitcoin market which is why there was this misconception recently that Bitcoin was holding up against the stock market. I thought that too. And then I thought about it a little bit more. I said, wait a minute. The S&P like rallied really hard up to the macro trend line. And while it was rallying really hard up to the macro trend line, Bitcoin didn't do that. It didn't go all the way up to the macro trend line. So we had less speculation up S&P had a lot of bear speculation down to the June lows. Bitcoin speculation down to the June lows. So in reality, Bitcoin's actually following the S&P to a T. It's just less speculation up, less speculation down at the June lows. S&P at the June lows. The setup is the same. It's the same. 
We're back at November prices for the S&P. Bitcoin, back at November prices. It's the same. It's doing the same thing. So it's really just, you know, a, a very unpredictable time. And currently, we don't really have much of a signal from the stock market of, of you know, is this really a bounce? We're up a little bit. Apple dumped today, kind of pushed the, kept the market from pumping. These are all the factors that I'm watching. Now, there's nothing I can say with certainty until we have confirmations, meaning, you know, some kind of bullish engulfing candle on, on the weekly here, bouncing off the 200 week, or a candle close confirmation below the 200 week for the S&P, or the US dollar index, you know, coming back to 50% retrace and bouncing or closing a weekly below it. These are all the confirmations we're waiting for that we just have not gotten. So as much as I would love to be very confident about one specific idea, I'm not. So I'm just showing you guys the factors and the variables and the risks that are happening now. So you guys know the potential, though my general, my general sentiment personally is that, okay, there is a possibility of a US dollar index contraction, treasury yields come down, and then the market bounces a bit. But until we get above that macro trend line, guys, the trend is your friend. And if we have an earnings recession, we probably dump lower later anyway. And this will send Bitcoin down as well. That's my sentiment, at least lower later, maybe bounce in the medium term, short term, likely lower later. That's it guys, that's all I got for you. Hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found it helpful. Smash the like, subscribe to this channel, and also don't forget we do have this BitGet promotion here, and there's only 90 slots left. It'll fill up fast, you can get $1,000 in trading bonuses. Check it out, I'll see you all in the next video.